Our special guest this week, Rod Black, drops by for a U.S. Open preview, and we'll talk about some other stuff. We've got a preview of the North America Cup and the one-shot shootout. Joe Tilly's great Canadian sports show, coming up! Welcome to the program. Our special guest today is a native of Winnipeg. He hosted four Olympics for CTV over a 40-year broadcasting career. He hosted the Raptors, NBA, former CFL play-by-play voice, TSN golf announcer, host for international hockey at many levels. He also called curling and, of course, was the voice of figure skating in Canada for many years, brand ambassador for North Star Bets, and, of course, father of Tyler Black. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the program rod black rod, good to see you my friend i'm the only one applauding for myself good to see you joe <laughs> and, and you're right about all of that um except um i also did dodgeball uh, rock paper and scissors and the most important line was the last line except i'm also the father of brody jesse and sienna and i'm a very proud papa and it's a great week to be on with you because it is father's day week and i try to see all my kids and i've got lots of them I think they're all mine. One looks suspiciously like Leo Routens. Uh, that's a story for another day. But because it's uh, Father's Day week, we always uh, celebrate that by, by, by watching golf or golfing, and it's U.S. Open week, so I'm really excited. Mostly to be right, on and right now, Right now, though, Rod, I believe you're in Detroit. Is that right? Yeah, just outside of Detroit in a town called Midland. Well, about an hour and a half outside Detroit, near Flint. Um, my son Tyler's playing tonight with the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers at IA Ball. Uh, so I had a couple of days off. Uh, rarely get a chance to see him play live. So came down with my good friend Gus Vidali, who you know very well, uh, yeah. who is a godfather to my kids. And um, he wants to see him play. So they're playing the Great Lakes Loons at a beautiful, absolutely beautiful minor league ballpark called uh, Dow Stadium, I believe. Saw it last night. So I'm looking forward to a couple of days just kind of R&R having a couple of beers, having a couple of brats, and watching some good minor league baseball. Well, this sounds like an awesome Father's Day week and weekend coming up for you. Now, uh, we want to talk mm. about, about Tyler right off the hop here. Now, he's of course, he was oh. drafted in the first round by Milwaukee and 33rd overall, highest pick Canadian player, having a nice season with the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers, yeah. the high A ball. Here, we'll have a look at his slash mm-hmm. line. Here we go. 286, four homers, 26 RBI. Yeah. 861 OPS and just 147 at bats. Uh, he went three for five, I noticed the other day. And we have a home run right here that Tyler hit oh, recently. Yeah. Were you there for this, Rob? No, I've only seen, I've only gone down to one series. Oh, there it is. Nice shot. Uh, looks a lot like his mom. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I, um, I went down and saw him in Wisconsin a few weeks ago with my wife. That was cool. What a great ballpark in Appleton, Wisconsin. And I had a chance as well to play Whistling Straits that week, which uh, we took Ty to play. Uh, that was cool. But yeah, he's having a nice season. Uh, it's, it's a learning experience. It's a journey. Um, I, you know, I, I think he's had his fingers crossed that he'll get elevated at some time, but he's loving this, this team. He's loving the manager. Uh, they, get, they play almost every day except for Mondays. Uh, and, you know, it, it's a grind. He, he's used to playing, you know, mostly weekends in college ball at, you know, he's had so many injuries already, like, you know, just little painful ones that he has to play through. And I think he's doing, you know, quite well for his first year as a pro. And he's, I'd tell you one thing, I went for dinner with him last night and he's loving it. He's just loves, loves, loves the vibe, loves it. He was, I said to you before, Joe, a long time ago, the day, I think the night after he was, or the day after he was drafted, you know, he was, he's one of those kids, and I know he's my son, but he's one of those kids that was just, born to play baseball and he loves the game and the, his love for the game to me is more, I don't care if he was pro or if he was playing amateur or whatever. I think that's what we hope for all our kids is that they just love the game. And this kid really, really loves the game. 
Well, I noticed that he's playing. I know he's drafted. I think drafted at third third base. He was he at uh, in college? And he was playing some second. I saw he was in center field the other night. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. They're playing him all over, and they're giving him a chance to play all over. And with that is that is that's great. You know, be versatile, and that's one good thing about him. I, you know, Rob Butler, who uh, was one of his coaches. Uh, you know, Rob, who used to play with the Blue Jays, was on the 93 World Championship team and, and one of the great Canadian ball players and one of the great Canadian coaches and builders and a great friend through the years. Rob once had a line about Tyler and said that he's a six tool player, that, you know, his, his six tool is, is the mind and the way he plays the game. And he plays the game at a different level for a lot of, he just, he just knows the game of baseball. And so, yeah, he, um, they get, he, I think he honestly he would if they asked him to pitch he'd pitch he used to be a pretty good pitcher he catch he catch he just he he's he plays the game kind of like a a football player or a hockey player and you know the coach just taps you on the shoulder go play and no you know it's 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 um it's it's fun to watch especially as a parent I mean again you know you, you we do everything for our kids and and you know you hope that someday something you know really good happens to them and they get to live out a dream and and right now that's happening for Ty. Well, yeah, the key is, you know, uh, these kids that, that make it, they work hard, and, and, and Tyler was, was a guy who worked hard. Actually, we, we got uh, Joe, but we had Joe Bowen on a, a, a few weeks back, and he talked about how uh, Tyler got his start. It was, it was Bowen and, and yeah. the, uh, the batting machine, right, that he picked up from, uh, uh, from Bobby yeah. Nicholson, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Bobby yeah. Nicholson, yeah. Who, who's with the Wizard Foundation and does a big draft for uh, Special Olympics and, and very much, was in the front office of the Toronto Blue Jays, was vice president with Paul Beeston back in the days, back in the late 80s. And I was doing this draft for him, and he said, Joe, what can we do, you know, for you for doing this? I said, you know what, when you come back from uh, – Done Eden one of these years, put one of those jugs pitching machines in a bag, laughingly. Well, don't they do it? And it's the best toy I ever got because we would take <laughs> that pitching machine down to Crosby Park in Unionville, plug it in, and Tyler and David would bring their buddies or teammates or whatever, and we would have batting practice and we would hit balls. And then we would play a little game called Danish Rounders that my grade six teacher, Mr. Anderson, taught us to play where you could only needed 10 kids to, maybe to play and uh, the mm -hmm. pitching machine and I was the pitcher in a circle and um, you had to throw the ball to me and if the runners didn't have their foot on a base, they were out. And if you ended up being three out and you had four batters and the last guy had to hit a home run to keep the inning going, but it moved the game, it moved the game, but everybody got to hit. So that's kind of yeah. an interesting little tale that we got yeah. from Joe. Yeah, well, Joe, I hear, hear the other thing is Joe and I coached our, our boys at a young age. We lived in the same area. So Davey and Tyler got to play together. Um, and uh, Joe is, is as loud as a coach as he is on a broadcast. <laughs> Uh, and he gets into umpires. Uh, I, I think I, I'm not going to – he was definitely bad cop. I was good cop. Uh, but we had a ball. I, I, unfortunately, my schedule in the summer just prohibited me from, from coaching very much. So I, I kind of became a spectator and a fan after that. But Joe um, coached Tyler for about two or three years, and then Tyler went on to the Butler organization. But they were part of the Markham Mariners, where Jordan Romano's from. Um, and, and Joe was terrific as a coach with the kids. I, I, like, I, I can't tell you enough. I mean, everybody loves Joe as a broadcaster, especially if you're a Leaf fan. And, and you know, he... He, he would be so good with those boys. Uh, he would get out, and I, I got pictures of him, you know, telling kids. It, it's just his words of encouragement uh, at the time or inspiration. And, and, you know, he had a phrase, and it was on all of their jerseys uh, and on their shirts, and it was, we play on Sundays. Because the, the goal, right. ultimately, when you go to these tournaments is to try to get to Sunday. And, you know, honestly, they did play on Sundays. They played a lot. And so, yeah, those were the first formative steps for Tyler loving the game. David used to come over all the time and they play wiffle ball in the backyard all day. I could show you video of Ty and Brody and, and Jesse videotape taping them and Dave playing and all the kids playing wiffle ball. And they made their little Fenway park. Actually it was more like a sky dome or Rogers center. And then Tyler would be announcing the games. They'd all have these little jerseys on for Ty. It was either Jeter or Aaron Hill. Um, and, and they would play games and they would start uh, at 10 AM, maybe even earlier. And they would finish at dinner time. And uh, to me, that was 
that, that's, that, that's what being a, a young kid is all about. That opportunity to play. Our, honestly, our kids have all, so many of these now. You know, that, that's where they play yeah. this stuff. Yeah. Um, and I love the fact that our kids actually had a chance to go and play with the jugs machine. Go play with the – play Danish rounders. Go play ball. And that's the beauty of, of, of a sport like baseball. And I honestly wish – I wish we promoted the game more in Canada. We should. We've got great Canadian ball players. We need, and I, I, I hate, you know, I hate to, 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 to be political about it, but we do so much for hockey. We've got hockey rinks everywhere, but we got to get more better stadiums, better facilities. We've got a lot of baseball and softball players, boys and girls. We need better facilities, Joe. And we need field turf. Uh, we, I, I think, in Southern Ontario, the 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 area around Buffalo has more field turf fields than we have in the entire province of Ontario, I would say in Eastern Canada. That's wrong. we got to start doing more of that. And we can create more Joey Vados and Jordan Romanos and, and you know, the, the, all of the great young players. Russell Martin, who I saw the other day. But all of them. Like, whoever, you know, we need more of that. And the game is such, it's, they call it the boys of summer, but it's really about the families of summer, the boys and girls. And we need to do that more. We need to promote this sport more. And I know Baseball Canada does a terrific job, or Canada Baseball and the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame. We, we've got a great history. We've got, we're celebrating two world championships, the anniversaries this year and next year, 30th this year for 92, 30th next year for 93. Uh, we pack the Rogers Centre. Uh, we have a team that's represented across Canada. Maybe someday we'll get the Expos back. We have a grand history. I think we have to treat the sport better. I think we have to treat the sport better for the kids. Yeah, and you know we we have a lot of open our open air. We got a lot of places we can put oh. fields, and, and and we should we should do a we should do a better job of that than mm. we do. Get some mm -hmm. jugs pitching machines out there, and and get those. Get, kids we need more Joe Bowens with with jugs pitching machines. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> just for get sure. just to, to get the and, and make and not and, yeah. and by the way, not make it hard where our kids have to always travel to the United States to go play. We have competition in Canada. Right. The Americans don't generally come up because most of them don't have passports. And we, beyond COVID and everything else, we need to we need to do that a little more. We we got to get our kids to kind of you know create better leagues in Canada. I love the CEBL, the Canadian Elite Basketball League. We have the IBL of baseball. We need to create more of that. So there's places for our Canadian players when they're maybe done with their pro dreams have a chance to play. And we create like this little town here. This th th like. Honestly, I mean, I'm mean, I can imagine like a, a Guelph or a, and I know they have teams, but to fill stadiums, 5,000 seats, it, what a great way to spend the day watching baseball, watching your local heroes. It's not always about the big leagues. It's not always about the big leagues. Sometimes it's just about the game. And when you have a love of it, I really like to see more of it across Canada. We need more fields of dreams is what we need. Sorry, right. I got off and, on a rant. And you know what? Yeah, no, it's all it's good. It's good. So we also need. I mean, Canada's doing well at sports that we normally haven't uh, done well at. I, I yeah. want to uh, touch on a few of these more. Uh, I want to talk about our soccer team and what's going on, uh, particularly yeah. with the men's soccer team. What what what's going on there? What is your what are your thoughts on it as you watch with, with it? Uh, well, again, I, I think this all comes down, Joe. It's it comes down to to to, to money and in business um, and and creating a better legacy and players who have sacrificed and finally, and we're going to see that maybe with baseball in the WBC next year, but this national men's soccer team, by the way, are not only fighting for the men, but they're fighting for the women too. People should know that. I, 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 I like what they did. I think it's, there's leverage. I, obviously there's been an issue with compensating players, by the way, you know, again, we, we compensate our hockey players in Canada very well, even from the junior ranks, they are compensated. They get educations. We don't do that as well with other sports. Basketball is getting better. We've seen that. But our Canadian national team, I can tell you stories, Leo Routens will tell you about how they had to fight for money, just small little funds to travel around the world to get insurance so the best could play. We've got to change that. And I think it comes from the higher level. I mean, I'm not a big guy hand asking for government handouts. Yeah, we need funding, but the government has to have, you know, they help with facilities. But if they have facilities, there's no reason in the world to build a facility and not allow kids to go and play in it unless they pay. I hate that. We've got to change that. And so for soccer, same thing. I think that's, you know, it just reached a tipping point and the players have realized, hey, it's coming out of my pocket, my parents' pockets. Costs a lot. It doesn't cost a, you know, that doesn't take a, a village. It takes a freaking city, a country to build a player and the money that's needed to build elite players. 
So I think that's what happened a lot. And the players just reached a tipping point. What I didn't like is the timing of it, especially when people had traveled across Canada to Vancouver to go watch them play against Panama. Uh, and now they go there and they, and I didn't think that was good for the, you know, don't take, don't, don't hurt the fan. But clearly there is a disconnect. Clearly there's a disconnect, Joe. We're seeing it with other sports. And so, again, I, I, we, are, we are taxed to the, to the hilt in our country. But I do think we need to throw more money into sport. We throw it into everything imaginable. We just threw tons of money at people, young kids. And again, I hate to get political, to, to not, people to not work during COVID. And I understood it's a pandemic, but they're not working again. So let's, let's start to fund people more to play sport. We should have scholarships at the youth sport or Canadian university level. Let's get, keep our people in our country. I do believe that. So that's, you know, kind of what's happening, I think, with, with a lot of these sports. It's, it's it, you know, money is a factor. The national women's hockey team, the, you go, the, the, the sports that are underfunded are underfunded. There's, it's, this is not a fake, by the way, folks. This is not a fake. These, the, the, these, these people, people take out mortgages. Families take out mortgages if they don't have the means to, to fund their kids through sport. That is so wrong. We should never have that happen because they love a game. And I know people will say, well, the same thing for arts. Well, yeah, the same thing for arts. Mm -hmm. We've got to find better ways to fund our, our elite performers, our elite performers, so that they can continue down that road and they don't give up the sport. And I really think that's really true for young girls because a lot of young girls are quitting sport around 12, 13 because they're not having fun or they don't have the funding. Let's change that. That has to change moving forward. If we learned anything about the pandemic is that take a look at ourselves in the mirror and make things better. Let's make sport better in Canada. And I think there are some, some steps being taken in the right direction. It looks like the PWHL, mm -hmm. the women's hockey, is starting to take off. Now they've got some legs and, and uh, that, that's good. Mm -hmm. And you touched on the, I like the way this is transitioning, you touched on the CEBL, uh, -E Canadian League Basketball League. You're involved with the Scarborough Shooting Stars, uh, uh, doing some play-by-play -play and, and Tell me about that league and, and uh, you know, see, see how we're, we're, we're making some, some inroads in yeah. exactly what you're talking about, building up the, uh, the strength of our, our at-home leagues. Yeah, as our friends at the, with the Tragically Hip would sing, a long time coming, a long time uh -huh. coming. And I, I will tell you, it's, it's been uh, kind of jaw-dropping for me. I mean, I've, I've, you know, done so many sports at, you know, the, the pro level and the NBA and, 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 the leagues, you know, the association, and you really talk about the stars of the stars. Well, here are a place where they're the, it's the show before the show. And, you know, there's a place for our Canadian youth sport players to play where they don't have to go overseas or elsewhere or, or, or quit or quit or become coaches. This is, it's been awesome for me. It's been a, it's been like going back to the grassroots again. I love it. I love doing the games. I, you know, Nico Carino and Sam Ibrahim, uh, the owners, uh, Nico, of course, with OVO. Uh, you go to the, one of these games, Joe. It's I'm telling you, you go to a party and a basketball game broke up. Uh, it's <laughs> it's incredible. It, it's incredible. I mean, we, you know, Jay Cole's been playing. He's he's not playing for the next little while because he's on tour. Uh, but he's drawn fans like crazy. They love him. Drake's been at all the games. Jamal Murray was there the other night. I saw pinball. People go. They pack these stadiums. But beyond that, it's not a circus. This is a legitimate elite basketball. It is so close to the NBA and the G League. Uh, there are players. Jalen Harris is an NBA player. He plays for the mm -hmm. Shooting Stars. We see players in the league who are, who are G League players. This is a good place for them to play in the summer before they go to Vegas or get ready for the season. It's a great place for them to uh, cultivate and nurture and, and develop and get better. And, 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 you know, what I really like about most of it, how competitive. And they have this Elam ending. I don't know if you know much about it. Uh, the last four minutes, they shut off the clock and you have a target score, very similar to what they did in the All-Star game with Kobe Bryant. So that once they shut the clock off, whoever's leading, they add nine points. So if they were, it was 80 to 72, for instance, uh, you shut the clock off and the target score is now 89 and whoever gets to 89 first wins. And it's, it's, it's quite good. It's fascinating. Uh, but, you know, there already have been players who have made it from this league, have been called up during COVID and are playing in the NBA. So it's awesome. Mike Morreale is the commissioner, the former football player. Yeah. Uh, they have 10 yeah. teams ac across Canada. I, I encourage everybody to start um, to watch it. It's streaming. I'd like to see TSNs and Sportsnets and 
some of the others, especially the locals, start to show the highlights because it's legit. You don't have to show the highlights every night of, you know, everything else. But you, these, they're Canadian players, by the way. Uh, that's another thing we need to show more in the media. Show, show our local, our locals playing. Uh, but it's, I got to tell you, I, you tell I'm like a kid in the candy store again. I just love, love being in the booth and love, love calling the games. And, and, and it's, it's a blast. It got, come out next. I got tickets for you, courtside. Uh, June 25th and June 27th. Well, we're, we're right in the middle of a move, but I might be able to find some time to get out there, right? It sounds like a lot of fun. I'll bring the players I heard the over venue, and they'll like move your stuff. Yeah. And then we'll do we'll, it. We'll, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, easy on Jalen Harris. I saw you had 38 points or something like that the other night. That's uh, that's, not, that's not a bad night. As you mentioned, he, he is an NBA player. Um, and speaking of NBA players, uh, what do you think of what Andrew Wiggins is doing for, for the for the Warriors, for the Dubs? I mean, is he not having a, a great yeah. uh, playoff? Finally, finally gets an opportunity, you know, after all those years, you know, spinning his wheels with Minnesota. Now yeah. he's getting an opportunity to shine when it counts. It's kind of fun to see, isn't it? Yeah. So proud of him. So proud of him. Like, I've known him for a long time and watched him. And I think Canadians were proud of him when he was drafted number one. He was on Sports Illustrated. They expected great things. and. You know, um, you know, with great power comes great responsibility and ex- expectation. I think Peter Parker said that about <laughs> Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, he's had a lot of expectation, drafted number one overall. Um, and, you know, going to Minnesota in a franchise that was moribund for a while. And he's always been dogged by this, you know, the, you know, the lack of, the, what do they call it? The torn motivator cup or the torn heartledge. They always said, uh, you know, he didn't have yeah. enough drive. And if you know, Andrew, and I don't know him well, but I've interviewed him several times and I really like him. He's such a grounded person with his family. And think about it is his dad played in the NBA. His mom was a Canadian legend as a track mm-hmm. star mm-hmm. Uh, has a park named after her. As a matter of fact, uh, he just isn't wired that way, but you know, what's happened to him is ability to get out of Minnesota, to come to greatness, to be around Steph Curry and Draymond Green uh, and Clay Thompson and the rest, to, to be around them, to be around Steve Kerr. We're seeing finally, you know, talk about the late bloomer as a pro, Andrew Wiggins, who, by the way, I, you know, I think it's probably a good trivia question is who is the highest paid Canadian athlete out there? And it would be Andrew Wiggins because he's a max NBA player. It used to be Joey Votto. Uh, so you're making a ton of money. Uh, you've got to earn that money. And he's earning his money. And I, I just think it's such validation. I do think that, you know, if they win the NBA cha- championship, I still don't think it's over. I think Boston's going to come back and it's going to go to game seven. If they do win the NBA championship, I think Andrew Wiggins has to be considered on the list or the Lou Marsh Award for Canada's Male Athlete of the Year. Mm-hmm. And if you hear me, I mean, there's a lot, like, you got to think, like, he was an all-star. He, he rose to becoming an all-star this year. His numbers are all incredible, and he wins an NBA championship. Well, Steve Nash has won the Lou Marsh before, but Steve Nash did not win an NBA title. Uh, for him to do that, I think, uh, says everything about Andrew Wiggins and the rise that we have seen from this young man still, um, who I think uh, has, has final, it's finally clicked. Joe, it's finally clicked for him. And I think for all of us, sometime in our lives, things just click. It has clicked for him. And I, I just could not be happier and prouder, but it's still, it's still far from over yet. Right. Well, I'd like to see it happen. I mean, I'd like to see the, the dubs take it. And I'd like to see, I mean, it probably because Steph Curry's in there, he's not going to be named an NBA Finals MVP. But in my book, he's, he's there, man. He, he could be the guy. Oh, yeah. And uh, so yeah, he's especially getting you know consideration. What? Yeah, you look at Steph, I mean, who would have thought, but, you know, whole 200 and I think it's 223 games he had gone without uh, uh, without a three-pointer. And, and uh, But I can tell you something else. They still don't win that game. They still don't win game uh, five, five without without Steph Curry in the game, if you know what I mean. He's still a facilitator. He yeah. still finds ways to do things. And And by the way, back to Andrew, one of the things that he's done now, is how good is his defense? He is a defender now. His defense is unbelievable. And he, I'm not saying he didn't play it before, but he certainly hasn't played it like he is now. He's taking a lot of heat, and he's making a lot of those critics eat their words. And stuff. Okay, we've got to get to some golf here. Uh, okay, quickly, though. Okay. What are you liking the cup final? Stanley Cup final. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, man. I, again, so happy for Steven Stamkos uh, and what he's done. I do think it's going to be goaltending. And uh, Vasilevsky is proven to be the best goalie in the planet again in the galaxy. Uh, if he plays like he has over the last couple of series, uh, with the exception of a couple of games, I don't think Tampa can be beat. I, I think Colorado is so good. I think they're made to, to play. I do think they're going to miss Nazem Kadri, which is a huge blow. Uh, Nathan McKinnon is incredible. Nobody gives that guy enough um, cred as being one of the best players in the world. I'm going to tell you he's one of the best players. I think the three best players in the NHL all are, you know, are M's. I think it's McDavid. I think it's Matthews. And I do think it's McKinnon. And I think McKinnon is very close, if not a better player than Austin Matthews. And I'm sorry, Leafs fans. Nathan McKinnon is a yeah. real deal. But Kale McCarr, it is another M. Kale McCarr. There's your other M. The, fourth M. Yeah, the Paul Coffey, Bobby Orr. Um, and I love his path. And he's, again, a, an Ontario kid. I'm sure, you know, again, it, honestly, it's like the Andrew Wiggins story. You know, sometimes good things happen a little later in life. And Kale McCarr is, is legit. But I do think that defense wins championships, and I think that Tampa has better defense. And they've got Victor Hedman, and and I hear Braden Point might be coming back. Uh, I, I do think they might be. Uh, you know, obviously they're going to be a little tired in Game One because they've 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 played a long couple long series, and Colorado's well rested. But I don't like rest in hockey. I think that's been too long of a rest for Colorado. So I'm going to take Tampa, Joe. Um, Rod's odds say. They, uh, I'm going to say Tampa in six games. Okay. Rod's odds, Tampa in six. Okay. Joe says, uh, actually, I think the Avs have the slightly better defense. Goaltending will okay. be a factor for sure, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, taking Colorado in six. So there, okay, there we so go. What's our Rod's bet? odds. What's our, okay, uh, what's our bet, Ben? Well, listen, I'm, I'm taking you golfing. Anyway. How about a dinner? You, you, yeah, yeah, that's true. Right. If I okay, show up wait, this time. Uh, loser uh, buzz dinner, yeah. You, this time okay. You <laughs> You know, All right, loser, loser buys. Yeah, yeah, loser buys dinner. Okay, uh, so where, where's the dinner going to be? Like, I, like I, we could go Johnny's uh, hamburgers. That's a, a tradition on our CBL. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, sure. Or uh, how about we do? Um, how about we do to Harbor Sixty? Okay. Now that's, Is that now good? We're going to reach in the pocketbook for that, but that's okay. All right, done. Oh uh, yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay, or just Harbor. We don't. Go okay. to, we'll just go to the Harbor and have a picnic. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, sounds good. Okay, now let's get to some golf because that's kind of what I wanted to talk about here today. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about our, uh, that big Canadian win this weekend. Of course, we're talking about Brooke Henderson. Uh, birdie on 18 to force the playoff, then an eagle on the first extra hole to win it. Uh, career number 11 for Brooke. It, now, she, would you say, Rod, the best Canadian golfer of all time, given what she's done? Oh, e yeah. Like, most successful for sure. Um, and you know, here it is. Look at the, like her swing is spectacular. I think she's, you know, I'm not going to say struggled, uh, but she's been a little inconsistent over the last little while. And, and it's been, she's, um, she spent, had to scrape around the winner's circle. Remember the days when she came out and she was like in the winner's circle all the time or around the, the leaderboard. Uh, I thought it was phenomenal. I thought it was uh, uh, ironic and coincidental that it was the same week that the Canadian Open was being yeah. played up north in Toronto. And I, and I do think that, uh, you know, her, her win is, is, is extraordinary. Do I think in the grand scheme of things she will? I do think that we have a couple of Canadian men who are going to win a lot as well. But 11 wins, um, she's got a major win. She's, she's, um, she's phenomenal. She, she, to me, is um, – it goes back to what we talked about earlier, Joe. It goes back to, you know, funding – and inspiration. And she has been inspired by players that came before her, but she's had the great funding, the Golf Canada Foundation, who have been throwing money into players. Golf Canada has been throwing money. Uh, again, they do it the right way. We've got to do that with more sports. But she is a complete beneficiary of that. She's a former, I think she was a goalie. She was a good goalie. <laughs> of course, they're all hockey players. And uh, yeah, I do think she's, uh, she's fun. And she's, and she's a great person. She's sweet. She's, um, Great in interviews. And you know what the, the, I like most about her is that she also, uh, over that veneer, that cover of that smile, she is a firecracker. Uh, she is a hornet. She has fire. And that's what makes her great. What makes her great is her inner fire and her ability to control it, but to channel it. And she did that again at the shop, right? So, I, you know, I'm, 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 I think it was, it was so cool that she won it. 
unfortunately, I don't think anybody in Canada got a chance to see it because, you know, they were either watching no. something else or it wasn't on on one of our networks. That's right. Yeah. Well, the RBC Canadian Open has taken a lot of people's time. That's for sure. What do you think of that performance by uh, Rory? 62 in the oh, epic. epic, epic, epic. I got a chance to play in the Pro-Am on Monday at that course, and I can tell you um, – I, I might not have shot 62 in the front nine, and, and it was so hard. Uh, I just thought it was so Rory McIlroy. Uh, I, 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 it was I, you couldn't stop watching it. It was phenomenal. I, I even had to drive and I put it on PGA Tour radio and listen, listen to the golf. Yeah, um, and it was the same thing. It came through. Um, I mean, the the battle with with great names like Justin Thomas and Tony Finau and. Again, it's too bad we didn't really get to see Corey make a charge. Corey Connors make that charge, but he did on the final day. But he was so far, so far back and in and, and, and early. Uh, but the shot making, the course, the way it played, the, the fact that the Canadian fans had not had golf in three years and were star for it. Uh, it was like, again, I, I, you, you know, I, went, I went to a hockey game and a, a, a golf tournament broke out. It was that rank at 16 was, was like the waste oh, yeah. management. I was hoping somebody was going to get a hole in one because I wanted to see beer cups fly. Uh, and, and Rory almost did that on the Saturday. Uh, it, it, everything, everything could not have, uh, connected better. Uh, all the, the, the confluences were, were, the stars were aligned, uh, especially up against what they were up against in the, the elephant, the monster in the room with Liv starting the same week. It was, uh. It was perfect for the PGA Tour. Jay Monahan had to be smiling because I know he wasn't smiling earlier in the week. It was terrific. And Rory McIlroy, uh, if he doesn't run for prime minister, he should, but I don't think he could take the pay cut. Well, I mean, I, I know that Dustin Johnson didn't have a lot of friends uh, around RBC uh, when he pulls out and joins no. Liv the week before the uh, RBC Canadian Open. Kid, does this, does this uh, league have any legs well if they got legs um they're expensive legs uh yes i do think i mean there's not a, i don't think anybody anticipated joe uh i don't know how you feel about it i don't think anybody anticipated it being uh up and running so quickly so fast with so many big names um it caught everybody off guard uh when dustin johnson um defected I would say, mm -hmm. um, essentially, Bryson DeChambeau, the other names, there's going to be more coming. Uh, it goes to show you that I money agree. talks. I don't think it. I, I don't think it's a good look on these players, especially. I know they, they could have all their arguments they want with the PGA Tour, um, and I understand that. And, yeah, they, you can have a disagreements, but to join a league, to join a group that's so heavily funded by people who have been tyrannical, uh, and, again, I guess I'm getting political, but it's not even – everybody knows. Everybody knows that what exactly has happened with, 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 with that regime uh, and, and what kind of, I mean, even if, the, even if they didn't have the, the atrocities that were committed that, there are, that are hovering over it, even if they were just an organization that were, uh, and that's not just an even, um, they had some cruelty in, or, or, or were not, didn't have equality for the rest of the world, were divisive, you still would have second thoughts. How these players could not, could not do their research, could not look at that and say, here's who I am working for. And if they think that this is going to be a kumbaya moment and that golf is going to help change a regime and make them better, like Phil Nicholson, oh, golf is going to, you know, it, we, maybe golf will be the betterment. Right. Of, uh, no, no. Look at the letter from the 9-11 victims. Look at uh, what happened to Khashoggi. Look at who's funding this. I think Greg Norman... Um, is making a lot of money, obviously. I'm a big Greg. I've always was a big Greg Norman fan, but I can tell you right now, I'm uh, I am uh, I, dismayed by you know again all the the selfishness and greed and the sloth that it goes along with the live tour. Um, but will the live live? Yes, it will. I think it will, and I think it's a very big threat. I, um, it's not like the XFL or the USFL, although I guess it's like the USFL in the fact they they drag big names. Uh, but it's not like these these fledgling leagues. Um, so what happens if it does bust out? What happens? I don't think it will. You know, they, it, it's like I said to somebody the other day, Joe, it's like imagine somebody said to you, I'm going to pay you more and you get to work less. Uh, I'd like 
that's kind of my job right now. <laughs> I, 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 I like know. that. Yeah, yeah. I know. So I, I do think it's a, I think it is a real threat uh, and very controversial. And I just, you know, I don't know. I mean, money, I, I'm really dismayed by the greed that went into this. I mean, the, those players have made a lot of money, but it's also goes to show you, Hey, if somebody dropped money in your pocket, it's like a lottery ticket. Would most of us take it? I, you know, I, I know people, you know, I, I would be hypocritical if somebody said, Hey, you know, here's a ton of money. I've, you know, you're, you're, you're tempted to take it. I just look, look at who's giving you the money. That's all. Look at, look at the money train, right. where it's coming from. It is, uh, it's, it, it's blood money, man. It's blood money. I don't care what anybody says. Anybody says about it, do your research. It's blood money. Right. And you know what? And a lot of people have, a lot of guys, a lot of golfers have said no to it. You know, Rory said no. And Rory he had a lot of shots for that guy who I just passed and wins. And he had a lot of shots against all, all, the, all the live guys. And, uh, you know, and Tiger was apparently offered a billion dollars. And he said no. I mean, it's like you, you at some point you have to ask yourself, uh, you know, is the money more important than giving up, uh, compromising all my principles? And that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Because if I'm going to support this, I'm kind of really compromising my principles, aren't I? Yeah. Yeah. Great, great, great point. Um, morality is everything. And you have to look yourself and what would you say? I, I look, I've always done it this way. I said, what would I say to my kids? Whenever there's been sort of a compromising thing in your life, what, what would you say to your kids later? Or how, well, if they asked you the question? And I, I wonder what they're... The kids are going to say down the road and you know you can say whatever you want about tiger woods and yeah he, you know tiger you know tiger's in the eye of the tiger when it comes to money and how much money he's made and you know he's a sponsor people could say well you know he's a sponsor whore and all this stuff and you know he gets all of it well yeah because he's a superstar but i kind of admire as tiger as well for the fact now he's keep in mind he has traveled around the world too and and made money on appearances and by the way i think a lot of these players have made money before on appearances and some on the PGA tour in Saudi Arabia or in China or wherever, again, where, where despots and dictatorships live. I mean, you know, the only thing I guess, you know, the, the next thing I can imagine with the live tour is let, you know, let, let's, let's have a tournament in Russia, you know, like, come on. Um, yeah. But I do think that one thing about tiger is that there is deep down, especially we've seen this kinder, gentler, smarter, um, older tiger, who does make some has some logical sense about him and again I, I i hey everybody has the right to make their own opinion i'm not taking that away from from any of the players just look where you're going that's all look where you're going yeah well we all have flaws in character defects and tiger has yeah. his but he does have his principles yeah. as well which is indicated mm -hmm. right here okay so let's get to is it, joe isn't it fascinating isn't it isn't it fascinating though that we're talking about that because Again, there's a, a major on. Uh, we just came off one of the most fantastic finishes, uh, greatest Canadian Opens ever. We got all this stuff in the sports world, and that is dominating the headlines and will continue to dominate. But it should. Yeah. And that's why we have the press, and we have the free press, and we're able to tell those stories. And we have journalists and, 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 and common sense. But you're right. So let's get, let's get to the, the – let's call it the big story of the week, the U.S. Open. Right, the U.S. Open. 122nd U.S. Open, uh, the country club at Brookline, Mass. Massachusetts founded in 1882. Were you there, Ron? I think I, I was there. Uh, I, I, I covered, covered 1913. I, I covered. I, I covered that first <laughs> one, and it was it was uh, Francis we met, uh who uh, yeah um, had a great right. he, he had a, a great he had a great niblick up to the first tee, and then the uh, the clique, uh yeah, but it was it was amazing. Um, and of course, nobody could drink then. I think it was during the time of prohibition. I, I don't even know that. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't know your history. It was right before the First World War. I know that. Uh, and his uh, his fairway uh, his fairway hickory sticks. Uh, I think were were, were problems. Um, also hosted the nineteen ninety nine Ryder Cup, uh, seven thousand thirty three yards. Not a long course, par seventy one. Um, Scotty Scheffler, of course, heads into this as the, uh, as the uh, world ranked number one. But the favorite after his win last week is now Rory McIlroy. Those are the older odds. He's now, he, Rory is now listed at 10 to 1 as the favorite, and Scotty's next at uh, 12 to 1. He's dropped to 12 to 1. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on this uh, as we look at some of the odds? Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, they have shifted a little bit, but uh, you, know, you, get, you get sort of an idea. 
Uh, well, I, I should uh, consult my friends at North Star Bats. Uh, there's a nice little plug. Uh, I would say here you go. I would I would say uh, I like I, I, you know what I like exactly what they have done with those odds because this is not just courses for or, or, or trending players who are doing well coming in. You know what I mean? Uh, this is mm -hmm. trending on players who played at a very similar golf course the week before. Um, St. George Royal uh, St. George's is not exactly like Brookline, but it's take a look at the footage. It's pretty close. Um, very fast. The greens are everything. Um, the greens will be lightning quick, quicker than they were at St. George's. They're undulating. I played Brookline before. Um, it's the home of, uh, the time when golf actually probably lost its real innocence back in 1999, the Ryder cup. And, and I can't remember who the, the announcer said that. This is now the era of the golf hooligan. Remember when Justin Leonard made the putt and the wives all came storming over the green and Jose yeah, Maria yeah. Fable had was no the putt and there were like stiletto marks of the green. <laughs> How do you repair stiletto yeah. marks? Uh, they had the most awful uh, uh, uniforms, I think, ever, the American team, but they, they, they knocked it out of the park. Tiger Woods, one of his first Ryder Cups, played in that. Uh, it was the last real big event for Payne Stewart, rest his soul. Uh, but to me, that if you that was set up at that time as a Ryder Cup event. It's not like that now. It's a U.S. Open, which means the USGA sets the course up with rough, and which means like last week at St. George's. Trust me, the rough was up, and the players. They, one of the re players normally don't like a course like that on tour. They would rather have a low score, but they loved it because it was before the U.S. Open. And a guy like Justin Thomas and Rory McIlroy, who both should be up there, uh, played so well. Mm -hmm. Tony Finau, I think, also. you got to look at it. What a great warm-up. That's, I do believe, why. Like, think about Rory. Rory. Rory's been playing so great since the Masters, right? Um, and, you know, he has had a win this year, but he's been hovering, hovering. Uh, and now, I think, getting into the winner's circle. The problem with Rory, he missed a lot of, I thought, short putts on Sunday. Those he's got to hone that in. You got you you have to putt your ball uh, at Brookline. The greens are, are like little postage stamps, and they undulate like crazy, Joe. It's unbelievable. Um, they have one par three. I think it's I can't remember the hole. It's like 130 yards. It's 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 short, right, for these players. You know, they basically hit a sand wedge in, but it's almost impossible to stop the ball. Um, and they got some monster holes. It is a monster. It is not the blue monster. Uh, well, they have a they have a green monster in uh, Boston, so this is their other green monster, I guess. Yeah. In many ways. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, unlike, uh, unlike Fenway Park, uh, I, I think I have my picks. I might as well go to them. I, I do pick Rory. Let's go to. Them. I'm, I'm going to go to. Them. Okay. Yeah, I go, I'm, I'm going to go. I, I'm going to pick Rory, and I'm going to pick uh, Justin Thomas uh, as well, and Scotty Scheffler. And uh, by the way, it's it's isn't it funny that Ken Shaw, who normally comes on with us to to go through picks, they can't find Ken right now. He's gone missing. Because uh, who won the Masters? I'm trying to think of who won the Masters. Who, who picked Scotty Scheffler? I won win? the Masters pool. Uh, I, I, but you picked him to win. Yes, you're the only. We picked him in our top three or four. Wait, wait, wait. There's no, pool. Hey, but, dude. There's no pool. There's no pool. You pick to win. <laughs> Scotty Scheffler won. So Scotty Scheffler, I, uh, I, uh, Emily, uh, I, 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 I like Scotty Scheffler. I think it was a good warm up. But you know the. The way he finished in, in Toronto, uh, as well, he, he's he's a contender all the time. But I don't I don't think this is a course for bombers, uh, for sure. Rory hits it a long way. Um, that's just the way he hits it. Yeah, you have to have your short game. You have to strike the ball. Uh, I think my I think my long shot I have as Corey Connors. Normally, I always have Corey because I know he's going to win one day and it's going to make me look good. Maybe I should stop picking Corey and he will win. Uh, but Corey had a terrific finish in, in Toronto. Uh, my longer shot. I think I had Dustin Johnson, and normally I would have him in the top three, but I think it's a longer shot just because I don't think he's going This is going to be nuts. And isn't it funny? I talked about the hooliganism um, from 99. Now we're in Brookline, and now how about these players when they come to that first tee? All the defectors, or some people might call them traitors. I don't call them oh, traitors, but, you know. It's going to get in nasty. A, you know, in a golf, in, in an area that's known for what? Patriotism? <laughs> you know the Patriots, yeah. and so now you got Dustin Johnson, you got Phil Mickelson. My longest shot is, well, or no shot is Phil. I don't I think, think he's played Phil, enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and he's got you know to try to win the the Grand Slam against the missing the U.S. Open. Uh, I don't think he has a shot. 
but you never, Hey, you never know. I mean, we said that before, but uh, I think they're going to be gracious, but I know when they have a few beers in them and it's going to be late in the day, if it was anything like Toronto, by the way, our, our crowd was like, heavily heavily inebriated let's hey could you imagine if it was in new jersey new york or philly oh my gosh they would be just tearing strips off these guys in the middle of their backswing and that's you know maybe that started in 99 at brookline but i think you're going to see a little bit more of the yeah. backlash wouldn't it be right. something though yeah. if dustin johnson who's who dustin johnson who i still think is is, is one of the greatest players in the world uh, to not put him in the top three would be foolhardy greatest swing guy can win cool level-headed that probably doesn't affect him dustin johnson could win this thing and wouldn't that be i hate to say it some some validation for going over to the live tour even though he can never probably play the pga tour again but I, it's going to this is what's going to be joe you're going to have it's going to be live versus pga or pga versus live and uh we are we're going to see you know how the uh ad livers do uh and 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 not to mention those who have some some soiled livers how they're going to be yelling at, at those players come come thursday it's going to be a an absolutely fascinating fascinating week you know what there's uh, there's lots to live for in this tournament uh rod uh, listen i are. want to thank you for for uh, for for this has been a really compelling fun conversation really enjoy this i know you got to go back and have uh lunch with Ty, so uh, we won't hold you any any longer. Thanks you, thank you for, for being here. And uh, like, uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to uh, my steak dinner at, uh, hey, at uh, Harbor so 60. So am I, I'm looking Rock forward by. to mine too. And I'm, I'm looking, and, I'm looking, and, I'm looking forward, and I'm looking forward to, to handing that bill over to you. So don't, you know, it'll be good. Yeah. Okay. So you say <laughs> seven, you, you have Colorado seven. I got just Colorado straight six. up. you got the, yeah. you, Oh, you got Colorado six. I got Tampa six. So there we go. Straight up. I got lightning. You got Lanch. Harbor 60. Here we go. Get it ready. Let's get ready to eat. Great to see you, Joe. Thanks, man. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Take care. Have a great week. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Yeah. Happy Father's Day, Rod. Thank you, sir. Okay. We're sticking to, well, we've got some more golf here. And we're going to talk about the one-shot shootout. Now, joining us now to talk about this aspect of golf are Barry Lee and Hildy Dabrowski. Welcome, guys. Good to see you. Thank you, Joe. Nice to see you finally after watching you for 30-some-odd years on TV. Hi, Joe. Thank you for having us Thank you, Barry. Thank you, Hildy. It's good to see you guys. So, tell me, we got to... I love this concept. We're all on board for this, but tell us about the one shot shootout. What is it all about? Okay. So uh, one shot shootout is a golf event company and we actually uh, are the official hole in one partner. And basically what we're doing is we want to bring that fun and excitement to the event. And we do that by turning the par three into an experience. And as the golfers approach our hole, uh, they know they're at the one-shot shootout hole because there's uh, lots of flags and signage and certainly that uh, definite element of excitement. And with one shot, the golfers are getting the chance to participate in all different types of contests along with fabulous prizes. So there's the uh, 10,000 or 20,000, depending on the number of golfers, hole in one challenge, as well as they get a prize if they are uh, on the green closest to the pin. And we have what we call our uh, $100,000 end of season one shot shootout where on the green we have a mat or one shot shootout mat and if they land on the mat they get a prize as well as they get entered into our end of season draw where uh, we will pick 10 golfers and they will come on October 16th to Thornhill Golf Club um, where they will have the chance for uh, one shot at a hole in one where they could win a hundred thousand dollars. Wow, that sounds that sounds that sounds pretty darn good. So, how does a golfer get involved uh, in the, the one shot shootout? Like, if I'm a, a, you know playing in a tournament, how, how do I know if I'm eligible and how do I get involved in this? Yep. So, the golfers uh, are given a notification ahead of time from the tournament. We send out a uh, a marketing piece to the organizers that send out the information. They also promote us at the tournament because there's a charity component involved as well. 
uh, from the proceeds that we receive at the tournament. The golfers approach the hole. Hilda usually goes through her 20-second pitch, which gets them involved with uh, all of the challenges and the prizing. The golfers then take their tee shot as if they were going to take a regular tee shot, and then we do everything else. We monitor so, the hole. We offer. Go ahead, Joe. No, go ahead, Gary. Finish your, finish your thought. Finish your okay. thought. We monitor. Yeah, we monitor the hole. Uh, the golfers take their tee shot. The ball lands on the green. They get a prize. The ball lands uh, closest to the pin at the end of the golf tournament. We'll award a prize to the winner of that closest to the pin. And then there's also prizing for the hole in one. And there's prizing for the $100,000 target as well as the end of season $100,000 shootout. The golfers pay a fee of $20 and that in, enters them into all of our challenges including the hole-in-one, including all of the other challenges, as well as the $100,000 shootout. So if I'm holding a tournament, how do I get golfers involved, or how do I get involved in the one-shot shootout? If I'm hosting a tournament, if i got a charity tournament coming up, how, how do I do that? Okay. Okay, so what basically you would do is either uh, reach out to us, um, and we would take over from there. So you would either email us or call us or go through our website and uh, we would send you all the information. We would send a marketing page out before so that you could send it to all your golfers. And our main objective is to bring something unique and exhilarating to your day. Um, and we want, we want to do basically everything. So you just reach out, we give you the information, we take over, we set up that day and, and uh, we go from there. Sounds like a good deal for if I'm holding a tournament, no outlay, and it, it adds, like you, as you said, something exuberating and fun and exciting to to, yeah. to the to the golf tournament. Um, yeah, it sounds terrific. So uh, you mentioned email address and uh, and website. Uh, tell us what yeah. what are those? So the website is oneshotshootout.com. Email address is sales at oneshotshootout.com. They can also call me. My phone number is on the website as well. Um, we're taking bookings, you know, every day, every other day. Um, it's really first come, first served. We've got bookings here in Ontario all the way up on Friday in Owen Sound. We're up there. We're out to Peterborough. Uh, we're out to Kitchener, Niagara. So we've been all over the place. So far, uh, some of our tournaments have been celebrity challenges like the Damon Allen Celebrity Challenge in Blue Mountain. We're doing uh, tournaments next week for Baycrest. We're doing uh, some memorial tournaments. So we've got a full slate of uh, events, memorials, uh, any type of golf tournament or golf event. It doesn't have to be a tournament. It can be That's a sorry. members group mm -hmm. at a private course. It could be um, public play where we'll set up on the, on the uh, golf course as if we were doing a tournament and give the public players the opportunity to play in our events as if they're at a golf tournament with fabulous prizing. Uh, the $100,000 shootout is in play and we're offering um, uh, different types of prizing for the public play as opposed to the tournament play. So we've got different opportunities for golf courses to engage with us corporate tournaments, corporate clients to engage with us, and charitable donations as well. Well, it sounds fantastic, guys. I want to thank you for and good luck with the uh, One Shot Shootout. Thank you for being on the show, and uh, we'll see you at the golf course real soon. I know that for sure. Yeah, we'll we see you. So. I know you guys will be there. I, yes, I think you are. next week or this week. <laughs> we'll look we'll forward see you. Yeah, June 26th. I'll see you. Yeah, okay. looking forward Sweet. to Thanks, you Joe. Thanks yeah. a lot, Joe, for having Thanks, us. Guys. See you soon. All okay. right. Thank you. All right. Okay, we got more sports when we come back, including the North America Cup preview. See you in a minute. More Joe Tilly's Great Canadian Sports Show coming up after the break. Sports! Guests on Joe Tilly Sports receive a gift certificate from Classica Imports. Top of the line, imported men's clothing. Check out the Classica Essential Collection now. Go to shopclassica.com. Hey, this 
this is Tommy Grazley, a.k.a. Tommy Gunn. I love two things, music and sports. And when I want sports, I go to the Joe Tilly Show. He gives me everything I want. It's a great show. Check it out for yourself. Joe Tilly Sports, coming up. Good night. Addiction Rehab Toronto, Toronto's number one alcohol and drug treatment center, saving lives, reuniting families. The only treatment center in the province to offer medical detox, treatment, sober living, and lifetime aftercare all in one place. Our unique and specialized programs are designed to equip our clients with the tools to successfully lead a life of dignity, respect, and purpose. Let us help save your life or your loved one's life Call today for more information or to facilitate an intervention. 1-855-787-2424 or visit addictionrehabtoronto.ca. Joe Tilly Sports is brought to you by COSA, Central Ontario Standard Bread Association, providing a united voice for harness horse people racing at Ontario tracks. Check out your benefits today at COSAonline.com and check out COSA TV on Facebook and YouTube for all the latest harness news and live action updates. Live racing year-round. Go to hpibet.com for all your wagering options. Become a member today and your first bet is free. That's hpibet.com. Do you know why that happened? You didn't fix your ball mark. The birds around here are very protective of the course, and when people don't take care of it, this is what happens. It's pretty simple. Just find your mark, fix it, and at least one other. Hey, look at the bright side. We're not up on the northern course. They've got bears and moose. Visit moregolf.ca today. You'll find everything a golfer could need from balls, gloves, and clubs to custom fitting opportunities and training gear. Go to moregolf.ca and get $20 off your first purchase of $100 or more. Just enter the promo code JTSports. Ranging up now, three quarter back. Now, my Cosa Swiss pick of the week. Last week, I went to Mohawk for Saturday night's eliminations for the Pepsi North America Cup. I took Pebble Beach, who was coming off that impressive win in the Sun Beach Somewhere Stakes. Todd McCarthy, the driver, trained by Noel Daly. Pebble Beach took to the outside as they headed into the far turn. Let's pick up the call of the finish from track announcer Ken Middleton. Picked off cover, Mad Max Hanover fourth. Frozen Hanover splitting through late, but it's Pebble Beach from off the speed. Pebble Pebble Beach to win the first Pepsi North America Cup elimination, a going away winner by a length and a half. Nighthawk second, Mad Max Hanover third. Then uh, what that, that quite wasn't his go there on front last week, but it worked out like that. But uh, I was really happy with the way that he did it. And then uh, even being first over there tonight, I was first over a fair way out and I was, you know, a little concerned about it. But he handled himself really well. And when I asked him at the top of the lane, he, uh, he had plenty there. You're mentioning to me that he's a smaller horse, but obviously tons of heart and continues to find those ways to win. So what's his temperament like as a horse out on the racetrack? He is. He's a, you know, I just describe him as a little dude. He's he's, he's such a cool horse to be around and uh, he's got a lot of characteristics and he, he's a lot of fun to drive. So uh, full credit to Noel and the team. They're doing a terrific job with him and uh, he's a lot of fun to sit behind right now. Length and a half better than I did. All right, now the second elimination heat. It was the two favorites, Beach Glass with Yannick Gingra on the buggy. He appeared to have some issues settling down in the post parade. Trainer Brent McGrath wasn't worried. Beach Glass took the lead from I Did It My Way just before the half. They would duel the rest of the way. Here is the finish. And a half in front. I Did It My Way from way back, Ario Hanover. It's Beach Glass coming to the line to win the second Pepsi North America Cup elimination over I Did It My Way, then Ario Hanover. I had told 
told Yannick a little bit about that, that he would fire up and he can quickly and settle down. And, and you know, he's got the open bridle on him, seeing a bunch of stuff, seeing the tote board lit up. And, you know, it's it's different. All those things are different for him. And uh, we're happy we geared him up the way we did. And it made it might have made him and Yannick a little uncomfortable for a second. But it worked out good and he relaxed good on the front end. He got a quarter and 28 and four in. You know, and if he had been on the muscle and, and aggressive, he would have paced that quarter probably in 27 and four. And it might have been uh, somebody else standing here. That's true. Got him pumped up, and he was a good-looking winner. Though, what more can you really ask for coming down the lane? Right. No, uh, I was I was very happy with him. He, uh, yeah, he he needed that race. That's only a seventh lifetime start, you know. And uh, those Colts that he raced there tonight have 20 starts, a lot of them. And you know, he'll he'll be a different horse, I believe, next week. Okay, and my Cosa Swiss pick of the week. I'm going to stick with a good thing here. Saturday night's $1 million final of the Pepsi North America Cup, Canada's richest harness race. And yeah, let's take Pebble Beach, who won last week's elimination in 149-4. and four. One phenomenal horse. Beach class could make it interesting. Or Nighthawk, Ario Hanover could be a long shot to consider. For all the racing updates, visit Costa TV on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Go to hpibet.com for your wagering options. This is the Excellent Sports Adventure, brought to you by Lycom. Well, another interesting addition to that Blue Jays lineup, Gabby Moreno, the Jays' top catching prospect, made his big league debut in Detroit. The 22-year-old native of Venezuela ripped a 98-mile-an-hour fastball from Gregory Soto, a two-out liner in the ninth for his first major league hit. Moreno later scored his first big league run on a George Springer single. He is the fourth-ranked prospect in all of baseball, a special talent. Welcome to the show, kiddo. In the series finale at Detroit, Ross Stripling getting the start with the injury to Hyunjin Ryu. Stripling on just one hit over six innings for the W, went the min- minimum with four strikeouts as the Bluebirds rolled 6 nothing to take another series. Vlad with a two-run homer, his 14th. And Stripling likes what he sees from Moreno. Yeah, it's great. Um, you know, definitely shook more than I've probably shaken all year, which is to be expected as we log reps together. But with the pitch comm, it's so easy. You know, he can just kind of go to whatever he thinks second best. I think the pitches that he was calling a lot of times were great. And I knew what he was thinking. I just might have been a little different. Um, but as far as like his setups and where the glove was, I caught my bullpen the other day, as you know, and took that right into the game. Um, didn't have to, you know, make any adjustments there at all. He knew when I wanted to go up where he set up strike breaking balls versus kind of two strike breaking balls and stuff like that. I mean, I thought it, I thought it was great. And he's athletic. I was hoping maybe one of those guys would try and steal and I could watch him, you know, pop a one eight and throw somebody out. But uh, very impressed. You know, we we showered him first shutout in the big league. So we uh, showered him, which is always fun and something that I assume he'll remember forever well they had to wait a few months to get the tournament in back in january they tried but they finally did yes indeed the women's under 18 final saw canada hang on for a 3-2 win over the u.s jocelyn amos of elsa craig ontario got what proved to be the winning goal and marie peterson of goodwood turned aside 29 shots as the canadian side hung on for a 3-2 win their sixth gold at this event well done well, week one of the CFL season saw the Ticats at Saskatchewan. Dane Evans making his first start at quarterback for the visitors. He had a tough day, a couple of fumbles, a pair of picks. Both offensive struggled, but Cody Fajardo hooked up with Keon Schaefer-Baker late for the score as the Riders dropped the Cats 30-13. to Well, they're going to a one-game winner-take-all in the NLL final. The Colorado Mammoth rallied from two down. Zed Williams scored four times. Dylan Kinnear scored the goal ahead, go ahead goal. Tyson Gibson added some insurance. The Mammoth outgunned the Bandits 11 8 to tie the series. Game three, Saturday night in Buffalo. Today's environmental tip keep your drinks in reusable containers. Instead of buying individually packaged drinks, Consider buying a bulk container for your favorite beverage and buy a reusable bottle. Not only will this help the environment, but it will also help you save money. RICOM, passionate people who turn complicated business problems into simplified technology solutions for public and private sector real estate, properties, portfolios, and enterprise customers. 
Optimize and future-proof smart buildings from the ground up. The latest in fault locating, base building network design, managed services, cybersecurity, data analytics. Our fault detection will support all smart strategies, define projected outcomes for capital planning, and reduce environmental impact. RICOM, smart protection solutions. At RICOM, we're building a path to a smart and environmentally friendly future. What an incredible week for golf in Canada. Rory McIlroy defends his RBC Canadian Open title with a ridiculously strong final round at St. George's. Well, Brooke Henderson captures the LPGA's ShopRite Classic with an eagle in a playoff. Now here's the one-shot shootout shot of the week. God damn it. Four! Our shot of the week is brought to you by One Shot Shootout. It only takes one shot. Well played. All right, we want to thank all the folks who make this show possible. These are friends, trusted business associates, and all around great people. I highly recommend them all. A reminder this show is available on Spotify, iTunes, Breaker, Radio Public, Google Podcast, and Pocket Cast, as well as the Spanglish Network, Zingo TV, and Buzz TV Live. Also, please like and subscribe to the show on YouTube. It's free. All of our great past shows and clips are on there. You don't want to miss that stuff. Thanks once again to Rod Black and Barry Hildy from the One Shot Shootout for being on the show. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week when Jerry Petrie drops by to talk about some interesting stuff. We'll see you then. Joe Tilly's Great Canadian Sports Show is brought to you by Brian Gribben Insurance Planning, helping you solidify your financial future. At BGIP, what we do that's unique in the marketplace is we show people how to spend and enjoy their money in their early years of retirement without the fear of running out. Also, we're able to do this without you having to change financial advisors. Please look us up at bgip.ca today. Let's book a 30-minute phone call to see how we can bring value to you and your family in your planning. Call Brian today for all your retirement needs. We did 905-686-5678. Do you want to buy or sell a home? Could 31 years of real estate experience help you? Why not speak to an amazing team that loves to overpromise and overdeliver? Aldo has a tremendous team of experts on staff. They are committed to making your next real estate transaction smooth and comfortable. Call 416 Get Aldo or visit getaldo.com. MNP, a leading Canadian national accounting, tax, and business accounting firm. MNP proudly serves and responds to the need of their clients in the private, public, and nonprofit sectors. Through partner-led engagements, MNP provides a collaborative, cost-effective approach to do business and personal strategies to help people and organizations to succeed across the country and around the world. With local offices in Oshawa, Mississauga, Burlington, and more, their team is here to support you. Visit mnp.ca today to learn more. The UPS Store in Brooklyn wants to help your small business thrive. We offer shipping and more like our pack and ship guarantee. Plus we offer graphic design services, fast digital printing, secure document shredding, and mailboxes with a real address. Visit 31 Baldwin Street in Brooklyn, Ontario. Say you saw this on Joe Tilly's Great Canadian Sports Show and we'll tell you how to save 10% every day.